Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for your word. It is the truth. We do receive it, written in our heart, written in our mind. Thank you for the revelation of it. We are hearers and doers of it. Thank you for the fruit that will come forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated if you would. We've been sharing messages on how we're to conquer, carry off the victory completely, and how God wants us to conquer all sin in our life. He wants us to go on into perfection, and which means we must have true repentance in our life and do what is necessary to see God accomplish everything that he purposes for us. Today we're going to talk about another aspect that is so important if you are going to see God accomplish his work in you to bring forth all that he purposes. And that is understanding that you must have a heart that is right before the Lord. We're going to talk about the subject of your heart. The word heart in the Old Testament, as well as the New Testament, the Greek and Hebrew words, is used over, a, there's a thousand places, over a thousand places where it's used. It's certainly an important subject in the Word of God because God is looking upon our heart. When you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you get born again. What do you get? You get a brand new spirit, the spirit of Jesus Christ. But you got more than just a new spirit. Ezekiel 36, 26 says, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. You got not only a new spirit, but also a new heart. The new heart on the inside of you, brand new. You had a heart that was not right with God, but you got not only a new spirit, but a new heart. And there is a difference between the two of them. Many people have taught that the spirit and the heart are the same. That's error. The Spirit is what we have got from Jesus Christ, the Spirit of Jesus Christ. When we receive the Holy Spirit, He comes to dwell in our spirit. The heart is different because there's no evil that can be in the Spirit of Christ or in the Holy Spirit. But in our heart, we can have doubt, we can have evil, we can have hardness of heart, we can have all kinds of negative things. They are different. And we are told to guard our heart, as you will see many important scriptures. Now we talk about the heart. Where is the heart? The heart is in the center of your being. We're not talking about the physical heart. We're talking about that which is connected to the spirit. It's of the spirit, but it is separate and different from it. Matthew 12, verse 40, As Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Where was he at? He was in the center, wasn't he? Hell in the center of the earth. Where is the heart? It's in the center of your being in the spirit. Now, your heart is so important because we see in Matthew chapter 22, when it speaks here of loving the Lord, verse 37, Jesus said to him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. When it talks about the mind, this is the word dianoi, which is a word which refers to the mind as a way of thinking, your way of thinking, the way that you deal with situations. The soul is talking about your will, your intellect, and your emotions. The heart is the inner man on the inside of us. You are to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind or your way of thinking. That's what God wants for us. Now, in Hebrews chapter 4, we see in verse 12, Hebrews chapter 4, down in verse 12, it speaks of the Word of God that comes into us, and it says, for the Word of God is quick, it's alive, it's a living thing, it's powerful, this means active and operative. It's the word energes in the Greek. And if you're here for the first time, we put information up and we put the cursor over the words. You'll see it in the lower window with the Greek word or Hebrew word with information that we address. This word energes means active and operative. It is active and operative. Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. There's a difference between them. And of the joints and the marrow, and as a discerner, of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. That tells you something more about the heart. The heart has thoughts and it has intents. The thoughts, this particular word, refers to inward reasonings or the way of thinking that comes from the inner man on the inside. 
And the intents refers to the inward intentions or the purposes. There'll be intentions and purposes as well as reasonings and thoughts, a way of thinking that comes not just from your mind, it comes out of the inner man, the man, hidden man of the heart on the inside of you. In fact, in identifying other names for the heart, we see in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, For which cause we faint not, for though the outward man perish, referring to our body, yet the inward man, that's the man within, which is the heart, is renewed day by day. It is to grow. It is to become strong. It is to be fed the Word of God, and you are to become strong and grow up in the area of your heart. It is to be renewed. And we see another scripture that also speaks of it, and here it calls it the inner man, over in Ephesians chapter 3, in the midst of the prayer that Paul was praying. Verse 16, he says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might, this is the word dunamis, which means power, by his spirit in the inner man. The inner man is the man on the inside. The inner man is the man of the heart which nobody sees but God. It is linked to your spirit, but it is different from your spirit. Another name where we see for what it's called is over in 1 Peter chapter 3. And here it's called the hidden man. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 4. But let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a weak, meek and quiet spirit, the sight of God of great price. The hidden man of the heart on the inside of you. That's where, again, the inward reasonings, thoughts, intentions, purposes come forth on the inside of you. God's the only one who sees that. It is that which is secret or hidden on the inside. Now, knowing this, why is our heart so important? Well, first of all, that's what God is looking upon and what he's going to, a primary thing he's going to deal with in your life. Over in 1 Samuel, chapter 16, in verse 7, the Lord said to Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For a man looks on the outward appearance, what he sees on the outward. But the Lord looks on the heart. He looks on the inside. This is the inner man, the man on the inside. God is looking at all of the thoughts, intents of our heart. And when he sees a heart that's perfect towards him, he is going to manifest himself mightily. He's looking for you and I to have a perfect heart. 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the earth. He's looking every place. To show himself strong in behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. If we will have a perfect heart before God, God will show himself strong on our behalf. Then he goes on and says, Here and thou hast done foolishly, henceforth thou, from henceforth thou shalt have wars. Why was this? This is talking about Asa. Asa had trusted in the Lord in the past, but then he turned from trusting the Lord. This is when Hananiah the seer came to him in verse 7 to the king, Asa the king of Judah, and said, Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria, and not relied on the Lord thy God, Therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thine hand. We've got to rely on the Lord, not on any other means. He said, were not the Ethiopians and Lubans a huge host with very many chariots and horsemen? Yet because thou didst rely on the Lord, he delivered them into thine hand, and there are a million of them, and they got destroyed. When you trust in the Lord, God will bring the victory for you. That's when he says, the eyes of the Lord are looking through, running to and fro the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts perfect towards him. But he said because he had done foolishly, he had not trusted in the Lord, he was going to continually have wars. He's going to have problems. He's going to have enemies coming against him. That tells us something. Our heart is important. God wants you to have a perfect heart. If you do so, then you will see that God will show himself strong on your behalf. If not, you'll have continually have problems. We've got to have a heart that is right before the Lord. If we're going to have a heart that's right before the Lord, Psalms 19 tells us something. 
In verse 14, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Your words and what you've been meditating on, thinking upon on the inside of you. The words of your mouth are important because they're going to affect you. Remember, if you don't bridle your tongue, you deceive your own heart because your words are being affecting your heart. They're not only going out, but they're also going into your heart. Therefore, we must make sure our our words are right, otherwise that's going to affect your, your heart adversely. You've got to watch the things you say. You only want to speak things in line with the word. And also with the heart meditation of your heart, they're to be acceptable in the sight of the Lord if you want to see him be your strength and manifest his, all the things that he purposes. He will show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is perfect towards him. This is why getting the word in you is of utmost importance and the word is going to be sown not only in your mind, but it's sown in your heart. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, he says, My son, attend to my words. Pay attention to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. We want to hear his word. Let them not depart from thine eyes. We want to be seeing that which is coming from his word. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. This word keep here is the Hebrew word shamar, which really means to guard, to keep and guard. You want to keep and guard them in the midst of your heart. Well, why is that? Because the devil comes to try to take the word out of your heart if you don't hear and do it. You've got to guard it. Just because it's come into your heart doesn't mean it stays there. Then he goes on and he says in verse 22, For they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. God's word brings life and health to you. And then he says again, keep. This time he used a different Hebrew word. It's the word natsar, which really means to guard in a sense of watching over it. Watch over your heart with all diligence. We've got to guard it. It's very important. What's in your heart? That's what God's looking upon. That's where he sees your whole intents and thoughts and intentions and purposes. For out of it are the issues of the outgoings, this means, of life. That's your heart is so important. We see over the New Testament. The word is to be not only in your mouth, speaking it forth, but it's to be in your heart. Romans 10, verse 8. What saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. In the heart it produces faith, and God manifests his promises through your faith. In your mouth is you speaking it or working your faith to put it in operation, to release your faith, to see him bring those promises to pass. And he goes on and speaks like how we see salvation come forth. Verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. We confess that he is our Lord, and we believe in our heart, that God's raised him from the dead. We've met those conditions. We have faith. He says you'll be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You must believe in your heart. People that have just confessed but really didn't believe on the inside, it didn't take. It didn't produce any results. There's lots of, we've seen people who have gone through the motions because someone told them to do it. Yeah, they didn't, didn't work. I wonder why it didn't work. I had them pray a prayer. Well, do they really believe or do they just do it because you told them to do it? If they did it because you told them to do it, it hasn't produced. They must believe the word in their heart and speak it forth with their mouth. So the word, word needs to get in our heart. It's so important. This is where the word is going to be sown in your life to produce fruit. In Matthew chapter 13, we see over in verse 19, it speaks about the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, the word of the rule and the reign of God, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth the way that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. What's that show you? The devil's after the word. A key will be you do have to have an understanding of it. If you just do something because, some, again, somebody told you, you didn't get an understanding, it's not going to produce. You're going to get spiritual understanding as you 
are, your eyes are open, the open eyes of your understanding are open through the Holy Spirit, and He will bring revelation to you as you are receptive to the Word of God. And that's important. We get spiritual understanding as well by acting on the Word, because understanding is of the heart. It's imparted to us as we act on the Word. We believe the Word. It will bring that forth. We've got to guard our heart, though, because the devil does try to come and take it out. Remember what it says over in Mark chapter 4 in the parable of the sower, verse 15. These are by the wayside where the word is sown, but when they've heard, Satan cometh immediately to take away the word that was sown in their hearts. The enemy will show up, and he will try to take the word out of your heart. You must keep the word in your heart and guard it at all times, and that is so important. Now, another thing that's important, the word in your heart is of utmost importance because what's in your heart is also going to come out of your mouth. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. He says, O generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? Rather, the abundance of the heart, the mouth, speaks. So as the word is coming into your heart in abundance, it'll come out of your mouth. Otherwise, what's in your heart? If you have a lot of evil in your heart, it'll come out of your mouth. That's why your people speak all kinds of evil things. We need to guard our heart. Your heart can have evil in it or it can have good things in it. In fact, he goes on and says, a good man out of the good treasure. The word treasure is a word which is what, meaning something that we've collected or laid up or has been deposited in referring to in our heart. It's, if you notice the Greek word, it's the word thesaurus. From we get our word thesaurus, which is a collection of meanings of words, isn't it, in English. So a good man out of the good deposit or collection of the heart. Now you've got to make sure you have the right collection in your heart. Bringeth forth the good things. But an evil man out of the evil collection will bring forth evil things. That's why we have got to guard our heart. It is so important. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. When it says idle, this means a word that's not performing. Something that's not performing or bringing forth a, a work, a laboring work, essentially. Otherwise, if your words aren't working for you, but they're maybe working against you, or they're not speaking the right things, you and I will give account in the day of judgment because your words are important. Your words release God's power. They release His promises. They release your faith. Your words put things forth. And that's the way God does things. How did God bring everything into operation? He spoke words, didn't He? That's how you're going to bring things into being. You're going to speak words. And your words are going to bring forth good things or they're going to bring forth evil things. And so this is why we've got to get the word of God in our heart and walk in line with it. Do what he says. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will be speaking. Well, this brings us to another point. you got a brand new heart, but that doesn't mean that your heart is necessarily yielded to the Lord. You need to give your heart to the Lord. Proverbs 23 Verse 26, my son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. We are to give our heart or yield our heart unto him so that we are going to receive only the things that he wants. And we're going to allow him to work in our heart to accomplish the things that he purposes because he will put his word, which will produce his thoughts, his intents, his purposes, that he wants through the word of God in your heart, which will give you your, the desires of the things that God wants you to do. If you're just going from the human nature desires, you're not going to know what God wants you to do. If you're just doing whatever feels so, such and such and it's affecting you, you're going to be in the flesh. We want to do things from the heart that are in, that's all coming from God's word that is going to be written in our heart and written in our mind. And where your heart is is so important. We see in Matthew chapter 6, verse 21. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Whatever you've deposited within you, that's where your heart is. That's where your desires are. 
you can pretty much tell where someone's heart is, just watch what they do after a while. Because whatever they're continually hearing or doing or walking after, that's where their heart is. That's why if you're 100% you're for God, it's going to be evident because you're going to be in the Word, hearing the Word, doing the Word, praying, seeking Him, studying, you know, carrying out, doing the Word of God in all aspects of your life, the things that He wants. Now what happens when you hear the Word of God? The Word of God is going to be written in you. Hebrews chapter 8 speaks of the fact that we now have a new covenant. This new covenant is what happens with this covenant, how it works. Hebrews 8.10, This is the covenant that I'll make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. So the word gets put in our mind, and it also gets put in our heart. The reverse of this is said in Hebrews 10, verse 16. This is the covenant that I'll make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I'll put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. You put those two together, God is taking his word. He is writing it and putting it in your heart. He's writing it and putting it in your mind. In your heart, it produces faith. In your mind, it produces hope. And you need your mind renewed so you will think correctly in line with the Word. The Word is to be in both places, in your heart and in your mind. And this is all the working of the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3 says this, For as much as you are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, God's doing the work, but people minister it through the word that they're speaking forth to you. Written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God. The Holy Spirit is taking the word and writing it. Not in tables of stone as in the Old Testament, but now in the fleshy tables of the heart. You have a brand new heart, and God is taking the word and writing it in your heart. Now, the word in your heart is so important. Proverbs. The effects of the word in your heart is important for you to understand. When you see the, what all the word will do, then you're going to want the word in you at all times. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1. My son, forget not the my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. What will happen? Here's a promise. For length of days, long life, and peace shall they add to thee. You got the word in you. It's going to bring these promises to pass. You're to keep the commandments, the Word of God in you. Length of days, long life, peace, they'll add to you. Verse 3, Let not mercy and truth forsake thee, bind them about thy neck. Write them, talking about his commandments, upon the table of thine heart. And it's going to happen through you hearing the Word of God as the Holy Spirit is going to do this. Now, also, what else is going to happen when you have the Word written in your heart? We see in Psalms, chapter 40, we pick up over in verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Remember the heart. That's where the intentions, motivations, desires come from. Why would you delight to do the will of God? Because the word's in your heart. And that's where it would give you that motivation and desire. If you don't delight to do the Word of God, there's something wrong. What's the problem? Either you got evil in your heart and you don't have a heart that's right with God, but, or you could have a heart that's somewhat right with God in the sense that you, you aren't walking in evil ways, but you don't have the law of God in your heart. If the Word is not in your heart, you will not have that delighting to do the will of God. We find those people that don't hear much of the Word, they don't seem to do much of the Word. Because if they don't hear the word and get it in their heart, then they won't have the motivation and the desire to do the word. You tell them to do the word, well, they haven't even heard it first. You've got to hear the word first and get it in you and keep it in you and guard it. It will cause you to delight to do the will of God. You'll be ready to do the will of God in every situation. What else will it produce? We see over in Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16. Thy words were found. Now, how did, they, why, how did they get found? Well, you were seeking after them. 
You searched after him, you seek after him, you were studying the word and you found the word. That meant you have to put some effort in. It's not gonna come to you if you don't spend time in the word of God, hearing the word. My words were found and I did eat them. You eat them, they came on the inside of you. you. You digested them. They came and became part of you. You took them in otherwise. You just don't hear the word and then just go off and, well, I, I heard the word. Well, did you get it in you? Did it get incorporated into your lifestyle? Did you apply it in your life? Are you put it in operation? That's how it comes on the inside of you. So I did eat them. And what's the word then going to do? The word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. Do you have a joy on the inside of you? You should, if you have the word in you. In the measure that you have the word in you, and you have taken it and digested it and have it in you, will be the measure of the joy and the rejoicing of your heart. Of course, you could have a lot of evil things you let into your heart, sorrow, sadness, depression, negativism, fears, anxieties, and that'll take away your joy, of course. That's why you have to guard your heart. But the key for having joy and rejoicing is having the word in your heart. It will produce that. The word is the joy and rejoicing of your heart. It will produce that. What else will the word do in you? In Psalms 119. Psalms 119, verse 11. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. As you hide, you keep the word in your heart because you, you incorporate it into your lifestyle. You're guarding it. You're not letting the devil take it out. You're watching over it. You're putting it first place. You're doing it. You're thinking upon the word. You're keeping the word before you. Then you're not going to sin against him. You won't be speaking wrong things. Remember, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will be speaking. You won't be sinning with your mouth. If you have the word before you, you won't be sinning in your mind unless you're letting the devil have place. You do have to govern the flesh, remember, and crucify the flesh daily, and you can't walk by your feelings. That's going to be important. But as the word is hidden in your heart, then that's the means for you not to sin against the Lord, because otherwise you're going to be running by the core of the flesh, according to an unrenewed mind, and you'll just walk in sin left and right. What else is going to be important about the word in our heart? Psalms 37, verse 31. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. I mean, you're not going to walk in a wrong path. You're not going to turn to the right or turn to the left. You're not going to get off track. No. We're not, our steps are not going to slide. We're going to walk the straight and narrow path because of the word. The word is the motivation. The word gives you the desires. The word is what God will quicken and bring the word of thoughts up to your mind to show you what to do. That's the Holy Spirit quickening the word to you. That's why scriptures come to your mind. So then you'll make the right steps. Your steps are the, the, what, the walk that you have. That's why we've got to have the word in us, directing us. Otherwise, we could walk in wrong directions. We need to guard ourselves and make sure that we don't give place to anything wrong. We also see over in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So, the light is coming from the Lord. It is the word of God. It is light. And what is it? The light of the knowledge. As the word comes to you, he opens your eyes, light comes in, and it gives you knowledge. Knowledge of the ways of the Lord. Revelation knowledge revealed by the Holy Spirit so you understand the spiritual knowledge, the spiritual ways of the Lord, so then you can act upon it and walk in it and carry it out in your life. We see another thing related to this, 2 Peter 1.19. We also have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed. Otherwise, God expects us to take heed to his word. We do well, or the word is kalos, which means excellent, really. We do excellently from God's standpoint that you take heed to it as unto a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. He'll bring revelation to you. So the key is, as the word comes to you, 
you're to do it and take heed to it, as you do the word, then you're going to come to the place where the day is going to dawn, the light's going to shine, all of a sudden I'm going to be able to see clearly. The day star is going to arise in your heart. This is why the doing of the word is absolutely of utmost importance in your life. Because if you're going to see, you come to the place. John 3.21 says, He that doeth truth, which is the word, comes to the light, that his deeds may be manifest that they're wrought in God. You're going to come to the light. You're going to have that light showing you what's the right path. God will turn open the eyes of your understanding. And, of course, the light will come and eliminate any darkness. As you hear the word also, it's written in your heart and it's also written in your mind. The first thing that it's producing is spiritual knowledge in you. Spiritual knowledge, knowledge revealed by the Holy Spirit, so you have spiritual facts, spiritual knowledge about things. Then you are to do the Word, which is important, and as you do the Word, it will produce spiritual understanding. Spiritual understanding, you'll see a scripture in a moment, is of the heart. And then when you hear and do the word consistently, it will come to the place of producing wisdom. You get knowledge, you do it, spiritual understanding comes forth, you continue to walk in it, it will produce wisdom in your life. Notice Proverbs 2.10, when wisdom enters into your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul. Notice, knowledge is really talking about it's pleasant to the soulish realm. That's the mind, will, and intellect, where you think. So you have the word in your mind revealed to you. You have that revelation knowledge. But then you act on it. You can't put wisdom into your heart. God's the one who puts wisdom in your heart. You can't make spiritual understanding come forth. God's the one who opens the eyes of your understanding to bring revelation of the truth. Proverbs 14, verse 33. Wisdom resteth in the heart of him that hath understanding. That tells you two things. Understanding's in the heart, and wisdom comes into the heart as well. Wisdom is in the heart of him that has understanding, because understanding is of the heart. So as you hear the word and do the word, the revelation knowledge that's come to you, it will produce the spiritual understanding. That's a key. Because if you don't have the spiritual understanding of continually doing the word, walking it out, it won't produce any fruit in your life. You must have that understanding. Remember the parable of the sower, the guy didn't understand it, the devil was able to take it out. That's why we have to get the spiritual understanding by doing the word. Many people have heard the word, they got knowledge, but they didn't do it and they really didn't get the spiritual understanding and therefore they never brought forth fruit and the word did get taken out of their heart. Now, if you reject the word, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, in verse 15. Here it's talking about, actually, the Jews who rejected the word of God. 2 Corinthians 3, 14. Their minds were blinded because they rejected the things of God. For unto this day remains the same veil, untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. Even unto this day, when Moses was read, the veil is upon their heart. They don't even understand the Old Testament, what the revelation of it is. Because they have not come to the place of receiving Jesus, because you need it. It's spiritual revelation. The veil will be upon the heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Anybody who comes to the Lord, the veil's taken away. And now he will open up the eyes of our understanding and bring revelation. Now, the word also, if you don't have the understanding, it still will have an effect in a person's life. This is why you sow the word in their heart and you thank the Holy Spirit for bringing revelation to them. If they'll have a heart that'll be receptive to the word, God will work to open up the eyes of their understanding. Here, this is when Jesus was speaking to those ones that he came to. This is after his resurrection. And this is what they said. Their eyes were open, they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. But notice the statement that they made. Verse 
Luke 24, 32, they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? It was having an effect upon them on the inside of them. It was like a burning in their heart. God's word will have an effect in a person's heart. So you want to sow the word of God in people's hearts. Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost. Look what happened here. Acts 2.37, as the word was sown, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? So the word got a hold of them. It pierced them in their heart. It affected them on the inside and they responded to it. When someone gets affected by the word in their heart, then they will be ready to respond. And they said, what shall we do? At the same time, People that reject the Word of God can be responding in a negative way, as we see in Acts 5.33, when they heard this, they heard the Word, this was, they brought forth, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. They were mad about it. It got to them, because they, of course, rejected the Word of God. We see over in Acts 7, verse 54, I'm talking about Stephen here. When they heard these things, all the things that he spoke, and what did he do? He just told them the truth. <laughs> he said, you slain them which showed all, all the prophets before, and now you've been a betrayer and a murderer of the just one. You just killed Jesus. Who received the law by the dispensation of angels and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. It'll deal with them in the heart. But they didn't receive it. So they gnashed on him with their teeth. Of course, they got mad and proceeded to stone him. But it shows you that the word has an effect on someone in their heart, regardless of whether they receive it or not. Now, you have to know that Satan will come to take the word out of the heart, as we mentioned. We saw it in Mark chapter 4. And we might just look at that again, verse 15. These are they by the wayside where the word is sown, but when they've heard, Satan comes immediately to take away the word that was sown in their heart. Now, it's interesting here. When it says that when they have heard, this doesn't mean they're automatically going to hear. It's a subjunctive mood, which means when they might hear. It all depends whether they're going to hear the word or not. Some are hearing and some aren't hearing. Satan is coming immediately and he's coming to take away that which was sown in his heart. Now, it's very interesting that this happens to be a perfect tense, and we've talked to you about the perfect tense in the past. The perfect tense means con completed work in the past with continuing effects at the time of speaking, looking at the finished work that is accomplished from this work in the past that was ongoing and looking at it where it's at today. So what this is talking about is the word that could be sown in you at any time in your life, in the past with a completed work, and continuing on even up to the present time, if you come to the place where you are not guarding yourself, or in, like in Matthew's account, you lose your understanding, that was sown in, your, in the past that's been there, he can come and take it away. Otherwise, he just doesn't come immediately every time you hear it. You could have heard it and walk in it for some time and he could still take it away down the road. Yes. It's not there. That's why it's in the perfect tense. It's not guaranteed that it'll stay there forever because you need to do the word, apply it in your life, carry it out, and guard yourself against the enemy's attacks because he will try to come and steal the word out of your heart. Over in Luke, Luke's account, chapter 8, verse 12. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest it says they should believe and be saved. Not really a good translation. Lest having believed, because this is a participle, this is why Young's translates it correctly, having believed, then it says they, as Young's brings it out, may be saved because that is the correct, because that means it's going to be a subjunctive mood, which it is. 
It's a subjunctive mood verb. In other words, what it's saying is, lest having believed, they believed, they might be saved if they meet the conditions. And remember, there's conditions for being saved. Unfortunately, because of the translation, people think that, well, they should believe and be saved. If I believe, then I'm automatically saved and it's a done deal. And that's not what it says. Having believed, they did believe, they might be saved if they meet the conditions to walk in line with the word and see the salvation of the Lord be manifest. Young's, of course, this is why we have Young's up here, the best translation that I know of in the New Testament. Having believed, they may or might be saved. That shows you that we not just believe the word, we're going to do what the word says continually to see the salvation of the Lord come forth and walk in it. We're not about to back off of it or draw back in any way. Now, what do you do with your heart? So we see how important the word is in you. And we've got to get this word in us. And the devil's after the word because he knows the word is what's going to produce the promises of God. It's the power of God. It's what's going, it produces healing. It produces all, everything that God says in his word. So as we saw before, but we'll bring it up again, you've got to give him your heart. You've got to let God have his, word, his way in your life. You give him your heart. You yield your life unto him that you're going to walk in his ways. And that is so important. Over in Deuteronomy, and even the Old Testament, they were instructed to get this word in them. Deuteronomy 11, 18, Therefore shall you lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul, bind them for a sign upon your hand, they may be as frontless before your eyes. Otherwise, make sure you don't walk any way contrary to the word. It's in your heart and in your soul. That's what was meant, have the word in them. Also, as we come to Deuteronomy 26, down in verse 16, This day the Lord thy God hath commanded thee to do these statutes and judgments. Thou shalt therefore keep and do them with all thine heart and with all thy soul. That means also you can't do things half-heartedly. You can't kind of halfway you know, have your intentions and desires in it. You do it with all your heart and all your soul. That means you're not going to just try and see if something works, maybe I'll try another way. That's not doing it with a kind of a double-hearted attitude. Mm -hmm. You can't do it half-heartedly, you know. You've got to do it with all your heart, with all your soul. You're totally committed to do what the Word says. Deuteronomy 29, verse 4. Yet the Lord hath not given you in a heart to perceive and eyes to hear and ears to hear until this day. Perceive means to know. Means you're going to know things with your heart. You're going to know things on the inside of you through the word in your heart. He's going to open up your eyes of your understanding. So you're going to be able to know things. You're going to be able to perceive things. And that's important. So this is why we got to come out of all the ways of the flesh and all the ways of the world. we got to operate in the spirit. we got to know things after the inner man on the inside that God's given us a new inner man that now, which is going to have the word written in it where we have faith, where we're going to walk in way, the ways of the word of God. So he goes on in Deuteronomy 32, verse 46. And he says this, he said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which you shall command your children to observe to do all the words of this law. So the heart is not only something that we're receiving things into, but we need to set our heart. Set your heart, you're going to do all the words of the word of God. You're going to be a doer of it. You've got to set your heart. Otherwise, you've already made your decision. You've already made your plans from the inside of you. You're just not going to, you know, maybe try something else. No, I am committed to walk in line with the Word of God and do everything that He says. That's total trust in Him. Joshua 22, verse 5. Take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law, 
which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to keep his commandments, to cleave unto him, and to serve him with all your heart, with all your soul. You also got to serve him with all your heart and all your soul. Total commitment to do the things that God wants you to do. So that means if I serve him, if I have time, that's not a heart committed to serve him. You know, the Bible even talks about preaching the word in season and out of season. I'm ready to share the word wherever. That's a heart that's ready. That's one that's ready to serve him at all times. And that's what God wants. We see over in Proverbs, we also need to trust in him with all of our heart. Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. Otherwise, you're not going to try to figure things out in your mind. You're going to do what the Word says. You're going to believe the Word. You're going to act upon the Word. You're going to follow Him. When the Holy Spirit quickens the Word, brings to you, you're going to trust in the Lord with all your heart. And you're going to do it. In all thy ways, acknowledge Him. He's going to direct your paths. He will give you revelation. It's going to come from the inside of you. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 4. As you hear the word, then you also need to retain it. Proverbs 4.4, 4, He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. That is a key. Remember, Satan is targeting the word in your life. In fact, temptations come. You hear the word, and all of a sudden you have an attack come. I wonder why that came. Well, because the word was sown in you, and he's trying to take it out of your heart so you don't do it and see the fruit and walk in victory. You hear the word on, doesn't matter what it is, the word on, you know, conquering a particular area, overcoming fear, and all of a sudden you have some fears that come up against you. That's the enemy attacking, trying to take the word out. You've got to retain the word, be ready to speak against the attacks that the enemy would bring against you. Proverbs 15, verse 14. The heart of him that hath understanding seeks knowledge. The more understanding you get, the more you're going to want to seek knowledge. I want more knowledge so I can act on that and get more spiritual understanding. But the mouth of fools, he feeds on foolishness. What should we be seeking? We should be seeking knowledge. Don't be allowing yourself to be seeking things that are not in line with the Word of God. It's going to be so in a bunch of evil things in your life. Proverbs 15, verse 28. The heart of the righteous studies to answer. But the mouth of the wicked pours out evil things. They just, you know, whatever comes to his mind, he blurts it out. No, the heart of the righteous, he studies to answer. We need to be slow to speak, remember it says. Watch the words you speak. Don't just be a reactor with your mouth. The heart of the righteous. And who's the righteous? That's the one, remember, who's doing the word of righteousness. He's, got, he's a doer of the word. He's got the word on the inside of him. Proverbs 16 tells us another thing that's important. Because of the word in your heart, which gives God's thoughts, intents, and desires that then start working through the word in you, look what it says in Proverbs 16.9. A man's heart devise, devises his way because of what's on the inside of you. At the same time, that doesn't mean that you're going to decide the steps you take. No, the Lord will direct your steps. The heart, man's heart will devise his way because of the word in his heart, giving you the desires, the motivation, the intentions, the thoughts, what's to be done. But nonetheless, that doesn't mean, oh, now I know what's done, so I'm going I'm to walk it out myself. No, you need the Lord to direct your steps. He's going to show you the right path. He'll show you the way to walk in because the enemy might be out there trying to lead you astray or have pitfalls for you. You've got to walk his steps because he knows the right way. It'll be a step-by-step -step process of leading you. So even though you have the word in your heart and you know what God wants, you've got to have him directing your steps. You know, like when the word was in my heart that I knew that I was called, called to the ministry, I had to get God to direct my steps. I couldn't decide, well, I'm just going to go do such and such. No, you've got to find out what God wants you to do. That's why way, way back, I was prayed in tongues for 10 days in a row, for the 12, 14 hours a day. And the ninth day, God spoke to me and told me what to do. He gave me the steps that I was to take, what I was supposed to do. And I then went out and went forward in those things. Even when God showed us, 
in Columbus that our time was done there and that we were, he was going to send us to another place. It wasn't, oh, the, now we have the word in our heart, I'm, I'm going to decide where I'm going. No, you're going to seek the Lord and he's going to show you and he's going to direct the steps and bring revelation and point every step. That's exactly what he did. He brought us to this place. You want to make sure that you get the word in you that devises, that gives you the, what God has for you, but at the same time, don't make the mistakes. Well, I'll just jump in there and run out there and do it myself. People make all kinds of mistakes all the time because they don't get the Lord's directing of their steps, and that's important. Verse 23, the heart of the wise teaches his mouth and adds learning to his lips. Your heart gets the word in you, and what are you going to do? You're going to teach your mouth what I'm going to say. I'm going to make sure that I'm saying the right things so that I'm releasing God's power. Or I'm speaking the things that are going to bring forth the things that he wants. I'm going to add learning to my lips because your mouth, remember, is a releaser. Proverbs 23, verse 12. Apply thine heart unto instruction and thy ears to the word of knowledge. I got to apply my heart to instruction, which also refers to discipline and chastening, correction. I want God to, you know, bring everything he has for me. Some people aren't correctable. They don't apply their heart to correction. No, we need to be ready to be corrected or to be instructed, directed in what God has for us. So we walk in the right paths and our ears are open to the words of knowledge that God has. Again, God is going to lead you step by step. Now, as we mentioned, we understand with our heart as well as have wisdom in the heart. Matthew chapter 13, verse 15. He says what well, the problem was with them, the Israelites. He said, this people, for this people's heart is wax gross. It's hard. Their heart was not tender. It was, it was calloused, really, this refers to. And their eyes are dull of hearing. Their eyes they have closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes, spiritually, hear with their ears, ears are open, and should understand with their heart should be converted and I should heal them. Understanding with the heart. God is going to bring an understanding, spiritual understanding in the heart. And then he's going to, of course, as you're acting upon it, it will produce the results in your life. Another thing is you want to be also understand that you can say things in your heart on the inside. You want to be sure you say the right things. I thought I could only say with my mouth. No, you can say things in your heart, too. Here's the guy, Matthew 24, 48. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, Oh, my Lord delays his coming. I'll just go out and do whatever I want because he isn't coming back. Well, <laughs> smites his fellow servants, eating drinks with the drunken. The Lord of the servants is going to come in a day when he looked not for him an hour when he's not aware, and he's going to be cut asunder, appointed his portion with the hypocrites, and weeping and gnashing of teeth. He's going to be in trouble. But it all started what he was saying in his heart. You've got to watch that you only say the right things in your heart. Remember, back in Genesis 17, when Abraham heard the news about having a child, Genesis 17, Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that's 100 years old and shall Sarah that's 90 years old bear? Well, he had to come to the place of faith, didn't he? And he did. He had to believe, and so did Sarah also, because she had to take hold of the power of God to conceive seed. And they did. They both got in faith in time. They had to believe God's word. But notice, they said something in their heart. God wants you to get the word in your heart. And then you're going to keep it there. Luke chapter 2, even though Mary did not understand things of what Jesus was doing and saying, he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was, subjected, was sub subject unto them. But back, let's back up. This is where she, she, he had said to her when he was 12 years old at Nazareth and he was still behind with the doctors of the law and the Pharisees and answering questions and so forth. 
He said, how is it that you sought me? Must you not know that I must be about my father's business? <laughs> That's what he said to his mother. They understood not the saying which he spake. She didn't have the understanding of that. We went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them, but his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. She kept them carefully and held on to them. If you don't understand things, don't throw it out that God is saying, keep it in your heart, keep looking for him to bring revelation, and he will bring revelation. You are to keep things in your heart, not let them slip. Also, you're going to be obedient, and when you are obedient, it's going to be obedience from the heart, and that's the key. Romans chapter 6, verse 17. God be thanked. You were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered from you. Obedience must be from the heart on the inside of you, not just because I'm doing something, you know, because someone told me to do something. Otherwise, you have revelation from the Lord. Obedience from the heart, that's what produces results. And here it says, being made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness because you obeyed the word from your heart. This is also why, of course, when you witness to people, make sure you don't give them your opinions, you give them the word. It's the key is giving them the word and so that that word sown in their heart will work to bring them to the place of acting upon it. That's why the things that we, all the things we write, we always write things that are in line with the Word, because it's the Word that has to be sown in people's heart to bring revelation, and that's so important. Also, when you're singing and praising, worshiping God, you know, you can just sing and go through the motions in your mind and your heart's really not in it. You could be singing words and you're out there thinking about what you're going to do later in the day, you know, or something. <laughs> No, you need to be really tuned, tuned in from your heart to the Lord. You're not going through the motions. Ephesians 5.18, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. That is what causes you to be continually filled with the Spirit. You could be going through praise and worship and really not singing from the heart. You're just kind of just going along, you know. And it won't cause a filling of the Spirit in you. You've got to make melody in your heart to the Lord. You've got to have your, is your focus really on the Lord? Are you really entering in? Or are you just kind of going through the motions? Well, I had a bad day or a bad whatever. <laughs> Get your eyes off of that. Get your eyes on the Lord. Enter into Him. The devil will try to stop you from entering in and making melody in, with your heart. And your heart's so important because that's what God's looking at, remember? In fact, he is going to take a good look at our heart. Over in uh, Psalms, that is. Psalms 26, over in verse 2. He begins, he says, Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord, therefore I shall not slide. Verse 2. Examine me, Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. The reins is really speaking of the soulish realm because it's the seat of the emotions and the affection. I'm talking about in the soulish realm. God will examine, he said, examine me, prove me, try me, test me. Well, we want that because we want to be sure we're right with the Lord. We shouldn't be afraid to say for God to examine us or prove us or test us. In Psalms 139, you know, we're not going to fool God anyway, <laughs> that's for sure. You've got to be the real deal. Psalms 139, verse 23. Search me, O God, know my heart, try me, and know my thoughts. Inviting him to do that. That's what God wants for us. These are all imperatives as well. He wants us to know this. Over in 1 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 4. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak not as pleasing men, but God which trieth our hearts. Otherwise, we can't be a man pleaser. We can't, it means you can't compromise. We've got to be a God pleaser. We've got to be pleasing God in the things we do. That's why we can't water down and compromise the word because we might uh, uh, make somebody offended. 
We need to speak the truth to people, what they need to hear. We're not going to please men. We're going to please God because he's trying our heart that we're going to be faithful to carry out the things that he wants us to speak forth to people. We also see back in Deuteronomy chapter 8 what it says. Verse 1 and 2, All the commandments which I command you this day shall you observe to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord sware unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness, forty is the number of testing, to humble thee, to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or not. Otherwise, God's working in your life will humble you. You've got to get rid of the pride. He's going to prove you and test you and find out what you're, whether you're the real deal. And the evidence is going to be what's in your heart. What's in your heart will give you the motivation, the desires, direct, show you what to do. You'll be yielded unto him, be ready to obey what he wants you to do. And evidence of that is what, that your heart's right is you're keeping the commandments of the Lord. You're walking in the Word. You're doing what He says. If we're not walking in the Word, well, I know that, but are you doing it? There's a problem. We should be doing these things. That's how He finds out what's really in your heart. Because remember, the devil comes to try to take it out. Deuteronomy 13, 3. You shall not hearken to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You and I are to love him. If we love him, we keep his commandments, remember. If we love him, then we, because we have his words in us, that's the ones that really love him. And we're to love him with all of our heart, with all of our soul. Your, your whole being on the inside of you. And if you really have the word in you, then you're going to want to do the things God wants. God should never have to prod you or get after you to try to get you to do something. If not, if so, there's a problem. Look at this in Exodus 36, 2. Moses called Bezalel and Aholiab and every wise-hearted man in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom. Even everyone whose heart stirred him up to come unto the work to do it. His heart was stirred up to do it because he had the wisdom of God. Well, how did he get that? Because of the word that he's been doing and walking in. Well, if you have God's word in you and have his wisdom, your heart will be stirred up to do things. If you're saying, well, I don't know if I want to do that. Well, what's in your heart? What's on your agenda? You know, what's, what's your focus? What are your plans? Do you have God's plans or do we have our own plans? Every heart, everyone whose heart stirred him up un to come unto the work to do it and to carry it out. That is what God wants. He wants us to get walking in his ways and doing what he says. So your heart is a key. He's looking on our heart. 2 Thessalonians 3, 5. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting. This means steadfastness for Christ, of Christ. So God will direct your hearts always into the love of God to do what God wants. And into the steadfastness of Christ. To always be steadfast in doing the things that he wants you to do at all times. He's going to examine everything. In fact, this is where we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, over in verse 5, he says, Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts and that every man will have praise of God. The hidden things, they'll make manifest the counsel of heart. We don't want any darkness in our heart. We only want the right thing in our heart. We want to make sure that our heart is right before the Lord. So we're doing the things he wants. The gifts of the Spirit also, when they come forth, they can be revealing things that are in people's hearts. 1 Corinthians 14, 25 is what it's talking about, about prophesying here. And the prophecy comes forth, verse 25, and thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. 
So falling down on his face, he'll worship God and report that God in, is in you of a truth. Otherwise, the things you were speaking, yeah, that really hit home and showed me what I needed to do. It, it revealed something going on on the inside of me. So God, the Holy Spirit, will work to reveal the secrets of the heart that nobody else knows. To bring us to the place of, in this case, of falling down and worshiping God. Or getting right with Him, convicting us, bringing us to the place of repentance on areas of our life. And over in Revelation, remember Revelation is talking about the judgment that's going to come to the church. In Revelation chapter, we go here, chapter 2. This is where it's talking about the works of the, of the church here, the Thyatira and how Jezebel was operating. Jezebel controlling, manipulating, dominating, teaching them false things. It was a big mistake. Gave her space to repent, didn't repent. I'm going to cast her into a bed, them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, meaning if someone is yielding unto Jezebel spirits, they're committing adultery against the Lord. Spiritual adultery into great tribulation because they're listening to another voice instead of what God wants except they repent of their deeds and will kill her children with death penalty is going to come <laughs> and all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins this is again the the area of the feelings purposes of the soul soulish realm and the hearts and I'll give unto every one of you according to your works God is searching our hearts. That's why we got to make sure we're walking in line with the Word. We're putting the Word of God first place in everything that we do. And that is absolutely of utmost importance. If people do not have a heart that's right before God and they walk contrary to it, they're going to see judgments. He's going to search the hearts of everybody to find out. And notice we're going to be given according to our works. Our works, what we're doing is evidence of what's in our heart. We got to make sure that we're not doing any works that are contrary to the word or walking in any ways that are that are of the world or walking in sin or yielding to the flesh or any of these kinds of things. God is looking on the heart. So we've begun talking about this today. And we've seen a lot of important things. The heart's the inner man on the inside of you. It's different from the spirit. As you will see, you can have evil in your heart or you can have good things in your heart. Whatever is deposited in your heart is the key because what's deposited in your heart is going to be directing you, giving you thoughts, intents, purposes, desires. It's going to be coming out of your mouth, the abundance of the heart, the mouth's going to be speaking. Remember, this is what God is looking upon. And if you have a heart that's perfect, he'll show himself strong on your behalf. We must guard our heart and watch over as we saw. We've got to give the heart to him. And remember, the effects of the word in your heart is the word will be written in your heart and your mind. It'll cause a joy and rejoicing. You'll hide the, hide the word in your heart. You're not going to walk in sin. Your steps are not going to slide. You're going to be walking in the ways of the Lord. You're going to get knowledge. You're going to get understanding. You're going to get wisdom. You're going to walk in the paths of the Lord. And you're going to walk in the ways that's going to bring forth fruitfulness. You're going to hold the word and you retain the word. Be a doer of this word consistently in your life. And that's a key. If you will do that, then God is going to manifest himself. At the same time, remember, he's examining your heart. He's going to prove. He's going to test it. He's going to find out what's in our heart. Evidenced by our works. Evidenced by our walk. Evidenced by our fruit. Evidenced by what's coming out of our mouth. All these things, everything that's coming out of us is what's on the inside of us. And this is so important. Again, What's on the, coming out of your mouth is not only coming out of the midst of your heart, but also what's coming out of your mouth is affecting what's in your heart. James 1.26, if any man among you seems to be religious and bridles not his tongue, but deceives his own heart, the man's religion is devoid of force, truth, success, a result of no purpose, useless. <laughs> well, that's a problem. We've got to bridle our tongue. But what's our tongue going to speak from? From what's in our heart. So without the word in your heart, is your tongue going to be speaking anything? Right? 
No, because you'll have deposited all this other stuff in you. And that's what will be being brought forth out of you. So watching your words, getting the word in you in abundance, watch what you're hearing, all these things. You see, unless you are, have a heart for God and you haven't given him your heart, he's not going to open up your eyes. Remember, they never understood with their heart because they didn't give their heart to him. They weren't yielded to him. They weren't committed to do what the word says. This is why it's absolutely essential to have a perfect heart, a right heart before the Lord. Say this with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the word of God that brings revelation of why the heart is so important. I understand. You look on the heart. You're looking at my heart. You see what's in my heart. I invite you to search my heart, to know my heart, to test my heart, to prove my heart, to find out what's in it. Whether I will walk in your ways and do your commandments and truly love you and serve you and obey you, doing all that you have commanded. I thank you that as I put the word of God first place in my life and I hear it, it's being written in my heart and in my mind and in my heart. It gives me the motivation, the desires to walk in your ways. I will have joy and rejoicing in my heart and I will walk in your ways. My heart will have desires It'll stir me up to do the work of God. I thank you that I give you my heart. I put the word first place. I will keep the word in my heart. I will watch over it and guard it so the enemy does not take the word of God out of my heart. I will make sure that as the words in my heart, I am a doer of it. And I will speak forth the word of God. Out of the abundance of my heart, my mouth is speaking. Therefore, I will get the word in my heart. And I will make sure that I am walking in way your ways. And I thank you, as I have a perfect heart, you will show yourself strong on my behalf. To bring forth your promises. Defeat my enemies. Conquer every enemy. See him put underfoot. Bring your blessings, your promises upon me. I thank you. I will be steadfast in line with the word of God. And I will have a perfect heart. So that I see you accomplish everything that you purpose in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Praise God for the new heart you have. Make sure you don't let any evil come into it. And you're going to be hearing, we're going to be talking about the good things that come in. We're going to also talk about how you can have evil in your heart. So we need to know that so we can guard ourselves against those things. We're going to be talking about how, what we need to have a perfect heart. And then the results that'll happen from good in your heart, but also we will bring up the results that happen from having evil in your heart, and it will bring a destructive effect. So we're going to make sure that we have the, a right heart before the Lord. Father, we thank you and praise you for all that you brought forth. We will be hearers and doers of your word. We thank you for the new heart you've given us. We thank you that we're taking heed to your word and we will have the word of God in our heart. We will guard our heart. We understand how important it is, this inner man on the inside. And we thank you that we will walk in your ways. And as you are looking upon our heart, you will see that our heart will be right with you. And we thank you that every one of us are going to come to the place of having a perfect heart so that you show yourself strong on our behalf and bring your blessings to pass in our life. Thank you for much fruit as we hear and do this word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah.